بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to another episode of Masail and Nisa. I'm Shafi Asun, I'm our regular guest, Ustad Saleha, and I'm going to ask you about the Quran Sharif and Shafi Asun. Assalamu alaikum, Ustad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, How are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. Um, Ustad, uh, Ramadan's coming. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ramadan is like a preparation, no? I'm going to ask you about the next day. I'm going to ask you about the next day. I'm going to ask you about the so, first of all, um, yeah, let's begin. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah al kareem. Uh, alhamdulillah, as you say, Ramadan is coming. We're in the month of Rajab now. Um, in a few days, I think two, three days, we're going to have the 27th of Rajab when our Prophet, salam, as we know, you know, he went to uh, from Mecca to Jerusalem to Masjid al Aqsa. And he made ascension to the heavens from there, the seven heavens from there, we know. So this is like an auspicious time, isn't it, yeah. for Muslims? We worship a lot. Yeah. Um, and the month of Rajab, as well as the month of Shaban, is a lead up to uh, the month of, uh, uh, you know, the month of Ramadan. But as you say, um, you know, subhanAllah, we don't know that we're going to reach the month of Ramadan. Right. And so we should be making dua. And there's a specific dua when, you know, in which we, uh, our Prophet وسلم, prescribed for us to say, Allahumma balighna Ramadana. Because, you know, we just need to look at Turkey, don't we? Look at Turkey and Syria yeah. and um, subhanAllah, you know, the earthquake which happened there. Now, I'm sure, you know, just like us, they were, in, you know, in, in preparation for Ramadan, they were probably, right. you know, thinking many things. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing we forget to think about is life and death. That okay. will we make it to Ramadan? And that's the reason for making this du'a. We is make this du'a the, often. Yeah, it, um, and it should be every day because in our hearts, we really don't know when our time will be up. So, alhamdulillah, you know, as you say, as we make preparations for Ramadan, we make this du'a, but we make du'a for our brothers and sisters around the world, mm-hmm. you know, who are suffering. Um, and obviously the rec- most recent events being the earthquakes. And we know that people are still being pulled out, the rubble, mm-hmm. you know, um, children, yeah. babies. So we need to keep them in our du'as. And um, and as you say, we've, we, we've got the 27th of night. So, you know, we say Shabe Barat. Or, yes. Um, uh, Shabe Mehraj, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we, we have many names for yeah. it in, in, in our uh, Bangladeshi traditions. But this is a night, um, it's not necessarily prescribed in the Sunnah to right. um, mark this night. But as you know that I think Muslims just like to do a lot of ibadah on this yes. night, like to make dua, yeah. you know, like to stay up doing uh, ibadah. And that's mm-hmm. fine, just so long as you don't, um, you know, turn it into something that is an obligation. Right. Um, so, you know, just to understand that, that it's a virtue that, you know, those who want to, mm-hmm. uh, who wish to do ibadah may do so. And of course, then we're going to have the month of um, Sha'ban. And we know there is a uh, khutbah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa um, you know, in the month of Sha'ban, he did his uh, last khutbah. And we know in this, um, there's a lot of nasiha for us. We don't mm-hmm. often refer to this khutbah. Um, but if you can find it, you know, um, I would um, recommend that, um, you know, brothers and sisters yeah. read through this khutbah and see the many wisdom that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared. Right. One of the things that always sticks out to me that he shared was, um, I remember this is something I often share with the sisters, is that he said even sleep is worship. So in this khutbah, he's talking Allah. about the um, the power of the, uh, you know, the Laylatul Qadr, for right. example, the fact that the Quran is the month of the Quran, you know, when the um, revelation of the Quran or the initiation of the revelation yeah. began. But not only that, we know that it was a time when our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to uh, revise the Quran with Jibreel Alaihi mm-hmm. Salam, you know, so he would go through the entire Quran. And this is a practice you find amongst Muslims as well, yes. isn't it? We often engage in the practicing, you know, of, of, of whether it's memorization, because of course our brothers will lead the salah. And mm-hmm. um, so, you know, many of our imams, they will be revising before Ramadan yeah. in preparation to lead the prayers. But also sisters, you know, we, we don't know 
those sisters who are you know hafidhas they mm. might be revising um, to you know be able to recite the Quran in the month of Ramadan as well and we know others as well like you know people ordinary people who perhaps haven't had a chance to memorize the entire Quran but maybe Juz Amma so they'll be revising in preparation you know for du'as um, but also for using them in their prayers um, so Alhamdulillah but I think um, the important thing is that we bear in mind that many of us you know may not make it to Ramadan I think yeah. that's not on the forefront of our minds often mm -hmm. we think we're very young or yeah. you know um, especially children we never imagine that you know we can lose young children yeah. and it does happen and even with young people we think only sickness will afflict, afflict you in old age mm -hmm. um, and then we find that people you know do pass away pass young away as well um, and of course elderly you know we may, may look at the elderly and think mm -hmm. um, you know they'll be with us and they won't yeah. and if we think back to um, I'm sure um, you know if I asked you to reflect back to last Ramadan yeah and think about the many people perhaps in your life yeah you know that were with you then that yeah. are not here now um, you know similarly I can reflect on that and you know it's it, it has been a test because we do lose people from one Ramadan to another and that's why the reason we want to reach Ramadan is because we all want to strive hard, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, you know, um, that Ramadan has been prescribed on us, fasting has been prescribed upon us, just like it was prescribed upon people before us. Right. Um, so, you know, so based on this, we know it's a faraid, it's one of the pillars of Islam, right. isn't it? One of the five pillars of Islam. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, lot of importance attached to it. Um, so if I were to ask you, what does it mean to you, um, you know, when Ramadan's approaching, how do you feel about it? How do you prepare for it? Um, I think um, I'm by Chintasha. I have two kids. I'm by Chintasha. I mean, there are like surah, shikai, the kun kun surah, there are ibuya shah, there are you know, kothri surah zanto, you know, there are namaz, kila kan forto, ramzan and masho. I'm ekta lagi preparation for the family shate, ammu abbu. Um, okay, so just Allah. just revising what we've mm. learned from our childhood, you know, um, and then new surahs that we can learn, you know, even at the fortress of a Muslim, mm. there are some, you know, surahs, you know, for us to recite from there and learn mm. from there and memorize. Um, and so just, you know, making that like um, the Ramadan that's coming, mm. you know, exciting and in a, in a time that we look forward to. So, yeah, for us. And the other thing is, um, you know, like you said, mashallah, that we encourage our children yeah. and obviously with our parents, our elders, yeah. we engage in conversations, um, you know, to learn, isn't yes. it? And to do our best in Ramadan. But um, wh why do we do all this? We have to also go to the core of it. Right. And as I said, in um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, um, you know, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ mm -hmm. So it means that Ramadan has been prescribed upon you just as it was prescribed upon those before you so that you can be of the muttaqun. لَعَلَّكُمْ yeah? تَتَّقُونَ mm -hmm. So that you can be God-fearing. Yeah. We translate it as God-fearing, God-conscious. Mm -hmm. um, to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. And this is what it is. These months, you know, the month of Rajab and Sha'ban, mm -hmm. leading up to Ramadan, we strive to do good deeds, to become, to draw closer to Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala in our worship. Yeah. As we know, um, you know, we repeatedly say this, isn't it, that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we all are aware of this, yet mm. we forget what these words mean. Yeah. That, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create um, jinn and man, but to worship him. To worship. So every breath of ours, you know, everything we do um, from morning to evening and mm -hmm. evening to morning, you know, everything is worship for us. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we can't enjoy life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, life is a test for you, isn't yeah. it? You're going to be tested. Um, and then, of course, um, there will be times you, of enjoyment and there will be times of affliction. Of but the test is that can you still be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you still say alhamdulillah? Yeah. Um, and this is why the month of Ramadan is so important for us. Uh, because as you mentioned in the beginning, it helps build our relationship with the Quran, doesn't yes, it? it does. And that is where we can get that, develop that taqwa from, yeah. that God consciousness. Because the Quran and Sunnah mm -hmm. are the main sources of guidance for us. You know, after that you have ijma, qiyas, and many other, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, means. But 
primarily it's the Quran and Sunnah right. and we use it in every aspect of our life you know not just worship mm -hmm. organizing our life you know our social life political life mm -hmm. our um, home lives you know our work lives mm -hmm. so every aspect of our life is covered in the Quran and Sunnah right. so I think that's another aspect we should probably speak about that you know um, we don't just read the Quran yeah. we apply the rules in our life mm -hmm. um, and if you study Sira, you will find mm -hmm. that this was what, how the Muslims before us, you know, the Sahaba, mm -hmm. how they used to behave. They would take um, the surahs which were revealed, mm -hmm. and of course, they would learn these surahs, mm -hmm. they would memorize them, but yeah. they would understand them. It would penetrate their hearts, and mm -hmm. they would be, you know, it would emanate in their actions, yeah. in their behavior. I think that's something as Muslims we need to remember that it's not just for our lips and our hearts. Mm -hmm. It has to show in your um, adab, in your manners, yeah. it has to show in your behavior. And as you say, when we spend time with our children mm -hmm. or our families, our elders, this is what we're doing. We're trying to teach ourselves and each other. Okay, so Al Khair, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, they did in, in on February the 15th. They held a conference um, at the uh, Excel Center, mm -hmm. and mashallah, you know, the turnout was really good. The contestants um, that participated mm -hmm. were young children. Um, have you been able to catch up on it at all? No, no. If you can just let me know a little bit about it. Okay. So I think um, you know, mashallah, I'm sure our viewers would have um, seen it. Um, so we had um, winners, and it was really. Um, just nice seeing children, mm -hmm. um, you know, have the passion of Quran, and mm -hmm. some of them were happy, happy with us. Uh, you know, we had male and female contestants, mm -hmm. um, so they were winners. Um, um, but they're all winners, really, in the yeah. eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And of course, you know, the um, the families mm -hmm. and um, friends. And I think, in you know, in our eyes as well, we know yeah. that all the children are winners. Alhamdulillah. But also, um, Al Khair um, hosted. A guest from uh, Medina Munawwara. Mm -hmm. His name is Sheikh um, Qari uh, Bashir Ahmad Sadiq, and he's uh, been an Imam. Um, so he's been a teacher of Qira'a mm -hmm. in at the Mosque of Medina for over 55 years. I think coming to approximately six, 60, possibly, because wow. he's in his um, 80s. And you know, Mashallah, um, the Sheikh. So. I'm actually a student of his as well. He's my oh, teacher as well. Sure. Alhamdulillah, I've been his student for five years. So uh, the sheikh, he comes here every year. Um, you know, without fail, he's been coming here since uh, a long time. Uh, even before I was his student, so I would imagine from about 2010 onwards mm -hmm. is from what I remember. Um, and Alhamdulillah, you know, he's work for the Quran. He's a world-renowned Qari. Um, but not only that, you know, he has there's so much mm -hmm. you know that you can read about his uh, background in fact I think Al Khair did a, an introduction to his background wow. which can be found on the website yeah. so if you look you know if you uh, just go to the event Al Khair yeah. um, the Quran composition you'll find it there and it tells you about the Sheikh's life how he began in Pakistan mm. um, and you know that's where he completed his yeah. education and then of course he uh, then began residing in uh, Medina and he taught uh, many great chefs mm -hmm. as well as um, you know he studied under many himself mm -hmm. um, but not only that he goes around the world to teach students and um, of course he came to the UK yeah. and at the Excel Center it was a celebration um, for him um, of students who'd received ijazat from mm -hmm. him which means that with what the sheikh the sheikh's speciality is this that he will um, he will select his students yeah. Um, of course, based on you know their reading, their ability, he will help them develop in mm -hmm. their reading. But if you take ijaza with him, you have to do one riwayah at a time. Okay. So there are seven qira'a, ashara qira'a, mm -hmm. you know, which means there's seven qira'as, yeah, yeah. ten qira'as. With him, you will do one qira'a at a time. Okay. So you can't do two at once. Okay. So you will read the Quran from beginning to the end, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, it, in the proper manner as 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 it was read, um, you know, to him, mm -hmm. as he read to you know his, yeah, teachers. his teachers. And of course, then um, at the end of that, when you've um, completed, mm -hmm. you get ijazat from him. Um, wow. um, so. I don't know, are you aware about what ijazat is? No, if you can tell us a little yeah. bit about it, even for the audience. So ijazat, it's, it's, I guess if we were to translate in English, it's like a, um, a, a form of uh, authorization. Right. So um, what it means is it's, we have a tradition in Islam called mm -hmm. the Sanad. 
So when we have a sanad, it's a, known as a chain of narrations. Okay, yeah. So you have that similarly like you have with um, hadith. Yes. So similarly you have the, you know, a, a same structure for mm -hmm. the Qur'an. Okay. So the Qur'an was revealed in this way. We know from through Jibreel alayhi salam mm -hmm. to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. And then of course it came down through our sahabas, gotcha. right? And in this manner, it's been recorded as to who recited to who. Um, it was passed down. So, you know, the teachers taught. And when the students take the ijazah, mm -hmm. they will pass it down to their students. Oh. And generation after generation, the Quran is preserved in this manner. So not only is it preserved, um, you know, in hif, um, hifdan, yeah. but also, you know, with regards to tajweed as well. Wow. So that's why you will find that, you know, commonly, um, generally, all people can yeah. recite, but not everyone will be able to recite with tajweed. Right. But you'll find it's not all of us um, were brought up reciting with tajweed. Of course. So, um, for example, my own journey, you mm. know, I learned without tajweed when I was little here. Yeah. I, I was born and brought up in the UK. Yeah. When I got older, when I discovered that I hadn't learned with tajweed, mm -hmm. um, I went back as a mature student, yeah. relearn, and alhamdulillah, you know, since then have been continuing learning. Um, and, and then I began teaching Quran myself. So alhamdulillah, you know, I am a Quran teacher also. But um, so this is the thing with the Quran. You see, you have to take a step towards it yes. and towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that um, Allah says, take a step towards me, you know, um, I will take 10 towards you. Yes. If you walk towards me, I will run towards you. And this is what happens. So if you have in your heart a desire mm -hmm. to want to learn the Quran, yeah. you know, to want to memorize the Quran, mm -hmm. uh, do you see, you will ask for one thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open 10 doors. So, you know, alhamdulillah, I feel um, this is what happened to me, that my desire was to be able to read Quran, because yeah. as I said, I hadn't learned with Tajweed. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, not only did I learn Tajweed, I got far more than I asked for. And so, you know, this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. that we have so much to be grateful for. When we ask, you know, he will give. But also, um, you know, we, we need to be grateful even when he tests us, because yeah. sometimes I think we shy away from being tested and we think it's all fine. <laughs>
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't abandoned him yes. and reassuring him that, you know, to not believe what the others are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is also a surah that we can recite when we're feeling down, mm -hmm. you know, when we're feeling hopeless. Yeah. Um, and this is because it's a prescribed sunnah, isn't it? If it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a surah of hope. So whenever we feel hopeless, we should remind ourselves that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's there for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then you know, similarly, he'll be there for us too, and we shouldn't lose hope. Inshallah, yeah. Inshallah. So, um, what would you say is our relationship, or how can we develop our relationship mm. with the Quran? Um, can you elab elaborate on that? What do you mean? Yeah, like um, I think just from my personal experience, mm. um, like I've grown up with obviously, like you said, you know, I didn't know much about Tajweed, you know, I was learnt like I was taught through my parents, you know, some yeah. Arabic teachers and things. Um, so my relationship with the Quran has been kind of on and off and I want to develop that a little bit more. Okay, um, yeah. How can I develop that in a way where, you know, it connects with me? Mm. So first of all, I think um, there's two things that we need to understand. Um, mm. That to be able to read the Quran yeah. um, is a, is, it's a fard, um, fard al ayn which means it's a, an individual obligation upon every Muslim. Okay. So you are obligated to learn to read the Quran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, naturally, you know, you use it five times a day in your salah. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, um, the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So we should attempt to not just read it, but learn the meaning as well, yeah. understand the meaning as well, yeah. the message. So, um, so it's, this is fard al okay? okay? So this is an obligation upon mm -hmm. every Muslim. So, of course, ev that's why you find that we take it seriously, you know, mm -hmm. about we all um, sign our children up for weekend yeah. classes, evening, you know, supplementary school. And, um, of course, for adults as well. Mm -hmm. I think the message I would give to uh, our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and especially, you know, the mums out mm -hmm. there, that if you haven't had the opportunity to learn, don't think it's too late. Yeah. It's never too late. Uh, you know, I've seen uncles and aunties in their 60s, 70s, 80s, subhanAllah, learning. Oh, yeah. So this should be reassuring for us that, yeah. you know, you're much younger um, just because your children are learning. In fact, that's the best time for you to learn. Mm -hmm. Learn with your children. You'll be able to teach your children. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, children are motivated when they see their parents learn. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they like to compete, don't they? Yeah. So yeah. this will just aid them in their learning as well. Mm -hmm. So Alhamdulillah, this is all our sisters, brothers and sisters. You know, if they've not had the opportunity when they were young, yes. I think they should realize it's an obligation mm -hmm. that you do need to go and learn. Reading with Tajweed is an obligation. However, you don't need to know the Tajweed rules. And that's why it's important you have a teacher. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a teacher right. who understands the rulings of Tajweed, mm -hmm. who can't teach you, of course, you'll never be able to recite the proper, uh, you know, in the proper manner. So, so long as you can read, um, I need to also probably make this mm -hmm. point that a lot of people may worry, well, you know, I'm just not getting the tajweed. Right. So not to worry, um, because our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in another hadith, he said, those of you who will read and make a mistake, mm -hmm. there will be double reward for you. So it's just to show that, you know, if you are struggling, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, keep trying. Yeah. And, you know, you need to make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because, again, you don't know that the longer it's taking you to learn, if you're finding it difficult to mm -hmm. learn, it, maybe that's your test. Yeah. Some people, you know, you may find will really absorb it easily, yes. will learn within a short period of mm -hmm. time. Again, that's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So, you know, either way you're grateful. But if you do struggle, just know that you will get double rewards. Yes. So, um, you know, how merciful is that? That even course, when you're yeah. struggling, you're getting double rewards. So, in a way, I remember when I was learning, mm -hmm. um, that was, I took a lot of comfort in that. Mm -hmm. And when I started getting more efficient, I started thinking, oh, subhanAllah, I'm going to lose my double rewards. Do you <laughs> see? And I'm sure many brothers and sisters feel this way. Yeah. But, you know, you have something to gain either way, really, yeah. don't you? Alhamdulillah. And learning the tajweed rules, it's a fard al kifaya, which means that in a community, there has to be somebody who, you know, a teacher right. or somebody in the community who knows the rules of tajweed to teach others. Right. Because we have to recite with tajweed. Um, but you don't have to know the rules so long as you can implement them. Mm -hmm. Do you see? So, uh, but I would suggest that, you know, um, I think it's important to mm -hmm. know the rules, especially for mothers, because you may, uh, you know, end up teaching yourself right. at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. um, not just to your children, because first and foremost, we begin with teaching our children. Mm -hmm. But you'll find uh, often, um, you know, sisters take on professions of teaching, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. um, whether in a school, in a maktab, or, you know, even at home. Yeah. 
um, so or, or community centres because you might be teaching um, mature older sisters, for example. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So, so, Ustada, I'm very fond of such Okay. Um, so, Asha Khuri, I've never used such a such a breaker. But the Abare Ba, I'm very discussion. No, I'm very sure. For what a Quran should be said, Kila Khanuito, especially in the month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to this week's episode of Masail and Nisa. Um, I'm going to break it again. I'm going to discuss for the Islams. Um, I'm going to relationship to the Quran Shifa Shate Kila Khanuito. And Ustada Saleh, I'm going to talk to the Islam. So, Assalamu Alaikum, Ustada. Welcome back. Wa Alaikum Assalam, Wa Alaikum Assalam, Wa Alaikum Assalam, Wa Alaikum Assalam, Wa Alaikum Assalam. Ustada, I'm going to talk to the Islam just before we uh, went on our break. So, I'm um, going to Kila Khan, I'm going to relationship to the Quran Shifa Shate, I'm going to develop for them for more. And especially as mothers, I'm going to our responsibilities are said towards you know like our families um, mm. our children at e shoptar maze amra kila khan e quran sharif pre prioritize khortam farmo amra shikar relationship to develop khora okay um so it is difficult for um you know mothers young mm. mothers especially and mothers who have children of all ages you yeah. know there's all sorts of challenges mm -hmm. um, but alhamdulillah you know the quran is a part of our daily life so mm -hmm. we need to remember that and I think with with mothers, there's so many ways you have to, you have to be creative at sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think, like anything, um, so f for example, you know when you wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. if you don't plan your day in the morning, mm -hmm. you will find you will just do whatever comes to mind. You will do whatever needs doing. Mm -hmm. You might do your laundry first, washing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. cooking, mm -hmm. etc. But there's no plan, so the, the productivity won't be as good as you know when you do plan. Right. So similarly. You know, when we think about the Quran and having mm -hmm. a relationship, if you just leave it to, uh, you know, God, as mm -hmm. so to speak, and you sort of think, oh, you know, if Allah wants me to have it, He'll He'll bless me with it. Yeah. It means you're not tying your camel, you're not doing your work, right? Yeah. So it requires a bit of work. So it requires planning from you. So what I mean is, if you're somebody who's really busy, you mm -hmm. might think, you know, okay, uh, I'm not going to get time during the day. Mm -hmm. So you may think to yourself, okay, my time for mm -hmm. Quran will be at Fajr time. Mm -hmm. And it will be 10 minutes uh, either before Fajr or after Fajr, okay. before my children wake up. Yeah. Because once they make up, you know, my house is going to be crazy. Yeah. But do you see? So you need to find that time. Mm -hmm. Or for mothers, for example, if their children are at school, mm -hmm. Then they might think, you know what, I'm going to drop my children off mm -hmm. and I know I'm going to have some quiet time. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my time for Quran. Yes. And, and whatever time you allocate, it doesn't have to be hours and hours. Mm -hmm. It could be just like 10, 15 minutes, but you make it regular every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you have that continuous relationship mm -hmm. with the Quran. Or it can be at bedtime because some mothers prefer that, you know, you send your, you fed your children, mm -hmm. they've gone to bed, you have that time alone, you're praying Isha, mm -hmm. Salah, and, you know, you take your time to unwind, isn't yeah. it? So you might want to read Quran then. Um, so wherever it fits, but it needs to be the same time and make it regular and make it in the same spot. So if you have a special yeah. spot in the house, you know, um, where you pray, mm -hmm. make that your place of Tilawa. Do you understand? Just to... Um, and put on some fragrances, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just create an atmosphere, create a calm atmosphere, yeah. um, you know, dim the lights yeah. so that you have that time. It's like, um, how do you say, it's almost like, um, you know, it's a spiritual aspect, yeah. isn't it? You're building that spiritual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's also very healing for us yeah. as human beings because mm -hmm. sometimes we have a tough day or, yeah. or we have you know if it's at night time mm -hmm. you might have had a very long testing day, day yeah. and you want to unwind and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything and just feel whole again mm -hmm. if it's the first thing in the morning then you know you want to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your day productive yeah. um, and for it to be a good day for you and to keep you away from calamities and tests yeah. so do you see either way we have something to ask for isn't yeah. it and it's our well-being at the end of the day because the fact that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. being the almighty being the creator mm -hmm. um, that he is offering us five meetings with him throughout the day yeah. you know isn't that a, like a privilege of course. if you think about it if somebody said to you 
you know, if I said to you, look, um, I know the Queen's going to offer you mm -hmm. one meeting every day, how privileged will you feel? You'll feel quite special. Yeah. Well, I should say the King now. <laughs> um, the Queen has passed on. So, you know, if I said to you, um, the King will mm -hmm. offer you one meeting, that you'll feel really privileged and, you know, I don't know, you were invited to a mm -hmm. tea party every day. Mm -hmm. You would feel privileged, wouldn't you? You would want to take someone yeah. with you. You would feel happy. You yeah. would dress in your best clothes. You would put fragrance on. You know, mm -hmm. you would go happy, smiling. Yeah. So, obviously, there's no comparison, mm -hmm. isn't there? When it comes to your Creator, mm -hmm. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you know, He's calling you five times a day to come and tell Him whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I think we need to create that feeling that it's like going to your parent yeah. when you were a child and you used to run to your mother or your father. Mm -hmm. It's because you wanted to be comforted, right? Yes. Or you've got a problem and you want to tell your mother. Yeah. Or you want to tell your father. Oh, you know, you wouldn't believe what happened, and I don't know what to do, and. You know, and we're looking for solutions. Mm -hmm. So similarly, when you grow up, you know, many of us, you know, may not have our parents. Yeah. Um, you know, may Allah bless them and, you know, grant them all Jannah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, now we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to turn to him and say, oh Allah, you know, this is, I'm finding this testing. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for me. Oh Allah, make, you know, yeah. take away all my troubles, isn't yeah. it? And so this is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran. And the more you read the Quran mm -hmm. also, remember it's a healing. Yeah. Um, it's a spiritual form of healing, isn't it? So I'm not saying that um, anybody who's sick, so whether you're physically unwell mm -hmm. or you're mentally unwell, mm -hmm. you know, you need to still seek medication, isn't it? You yeah. still seek, um, you know, um, how do you say, just, you know, you go for that yeah, physical course, aspect, yeah, yeah. isn't it? You have to go to a doctor, yeah. consultant. But there's the spiritual side we need to address as of well. Course. And if you take care of both sides, then you you know your health will be in harmony. Of and course. you'll be more content. It doesn't matter what comes. If you're tested with a calamity, mm -hmm. you will find that, yes, you'll shed tears. Mm -hmm. And you'll hurt like any yeah. human being, you mm -hmm. know. Even our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he hurt, didn't he? He lost all his children, you know, mm -hmm. except one. But we know that he shed tears, yeah. uh, but he was patient. Yes. And similarly, that's what we are. We can hurt, mm -hmm. we can cry, mm -hmm. but can we be patient with Allah's yes. decree? Um, you know, that is the test. And if you can be, and you find yourself content with that, mm -hmm. you'll find because you're taking care of yourself physically mm -hmm. and you know spiritually, so your mental well-being mm -hmm. as well as your physical well-being, mm -hmm. that you will be in a better place. You'll be able to manage better. Um, and, you know, of course, it doesn't mean that we should, <coughs> uh, excuse me, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us more tests or to mm -hmm. grant us patience, mm -hmm. but ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you, to not test you. You know, we're weak human beings at yeah. the end of the day. Um, we're not strong. No. We're needy. We're weak. We acknowledge that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. And we say, you know what, you've tested me on this, alhamdulillah, but please don't test me anymore. Take my trials yeah. away, you know. Um, just grant us ease um, and you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, you know inna ma'al usri yusra fa inna ma'al usri yusra in surah al um, you know we find that that ayah is repeated isn't it yeah. indeed with hardship there will be Thanks. ease and it's repeated again mm -hmm. so can you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reassuring us so for Muslims this is a journey that we're gonna be tested in dunya it's, it's like a roller coaster isn't mm -hmm. it that we're going to have good times, mm -hmm. uh, one will be thankful to Allah, naturally you're thankful mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. somebody makes you happy, right, yes. or gives you gifts. But when the hard times come, um, even then we have to say Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. You know, your heart might be aching, you'll feel distraught, but you have to still have that connection to Allah and not turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the sign of the true believer, mm -hmm. that they will be grateful in both the states. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember the ayah, but in Surah uh, Al-Ankabut, mm -hmm. uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that, you know, do you think, he, say, he says, do you think that you will say, I believe, and you will not be tested? Yes. Uh, I think it's come to me. Yes. Uh, so it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do you really believe mm -hmm. that you're going to say, I believe, and that you will not be tested? Of course. So, you know, that's telling us that mm -hmm. we will be tested. And, and that's not the only ayah. We have numerous surahs yeah. telling us. Um, but we're human beings, aren't we? We just go back to expectations, yeah, having expectations. Course, yeah. and so the truth is we're going to be tested. Um, and life is a test. Mm -hmm. And you know, subhanAllah, we don't realize that life is so short. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a taste 
of you know what the akhirah will be like yeah. any um blessings you have in the mm -hmm. dunya you know being able to taste food being able to wear nice clothes mm -hmm. Um, you know, enjoying the uh, weather, yeah. uh, being able to travel. Mm -hmm. This is, these are just small, um, you know, if you like, examples yeah. of what's going to be waiting for you in mm -hmm. Jannah, inshallah. Yeah, sure. And that's the everlasting, eternal life. Mm -hmm. This life is, we know there's a beginning and an end. Yes. Everything, you know, will be destroyed, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, from the moment we're born um, and we grow up, we... It's, it's like we're in a process of dying mm -hmm. already. You know, we're already decaying. Yeah. Do you see, we have like sickness, ailments, yeah. we suffer. And we've seen through our families, you know, we've heard from our parents mm -hmm. and our elders how short life is, you know, of when they course. give you an account of their yeah. life. Um, when you're a child, of course, you know, when you have <laughs> young children, you think, I have my whole life ahead. Yeah. When you have your own family and you see ch your children grow up, you think, mm -hmm. Subhanallah, where has the time of gone? Course, yeah, uh, you look at your children and think, I was like them. Mm -hmm, and, you know, so this is how fast life will pass us. And uh, really, you know, um, there's wisdom in what our parents, our elders say to mm -hmm. us. They keep telling us, don't they, your life is so short. Um, mm -hmm. and, and there's that hadith um, about the blinking of an eye. It's yeah. like the blinking of an eye. And that's how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep our focus and as... Um, coming back to our sisters, because mm -hmm. that's what you were saying, how do mm -hmm. our sisters, yeah. um, you know, um, fulfill this commitment? I think, firstly, there's a message to all our brothers out there that, you know, if you have wives, mm -hmm. mothers and sisters mm -hmm. who have not been able to learn the Qur'an, that know that it is your uh, obligation mm -hmm. to provide that education for them. Right. Um, and, you know, whether it's online mm -hmm. or whether it's in person, it's mm -hmm. better to have a teacher, uh, you know, especially when it comes to Quran, have a teacher who can see you face to face mm -hmm. like we are. Yeah. Because with Tajweed, it's mm -hmm. all about pronunciation. Yes. Um, you know, so lip movement, tongue mm -hmm. movement, you know, it, it takes time to develop. Yeah. Online is good too. Sometimes, you know, there can be loss of sound mm -hmm. or you just don't have that personal touch. So, of course, for our sisters who can't be there in person, yeah then, you know, they should try to sign up for online classes, mm -hmm. Quran classes, mm -hmm. simple tajweed rulings. Mm -hmm. But it should be on a regular basis, whether yeah. it's a weekly, mm -hmm. fortnightly, monthly, mm -hmm. but something like you don't give up until you're efficient, yeah. you know, until you're fluently reading. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, um, there are, um, as I said, in our community, there are many organizations mm -hmm. now who offer tajweed courses. I would, however, say, because... Um, one thing I've noticed is many teachers may not be well equipped in Tajweed. Right. So it's really important when you look to an organization, mm -hmm. whether it's online, whether you know, you, you, it's in person, it's mm -hmm. in your uh, locality, in your neighborhood, always check out who the teachers are, okay. you know, their credentials, mm -hmm. wh where have they um, you know, got their qualifications from. Mm -hmm. I say this um, you know, with, um, because we need to tread with caution because mm -hmm. sometimes the teachers, they have good intentions, you know, alhamdulillah, the Muslim woman, they have very good intentions, but we need to understand that if I myself am struggling with tajweed, mm -hmm. then I will not be able to teach somebody else tajweed. So I need to go and um, equip myself with mm -hmm. that tool first and then come back and teach people. Yeah. So you know what, teach alongside another teacher who mm -hmm. has tajweed so that you can develop your tajweed. Do you see what of I mean? Course, because yeah. otherwise what will happen is if you're, especially when it comes to children, mm -hmm. They're like clean slates, aren't they? Yeah, so they if you're teaching them without tajweed, mm -hmm. they're going to learn to recite incorrectly, pronouncing mm -hmm. the letters, mm -hmm. and then it's going to be very difficult to undo that. Yeah, definitely. As we struggled, you yeah. know, when we were not taught with tajweed, so yeah. when, when it came to later on in life, we had to relearn. relearn everything. We have to undo a lot of mm -hmm. things, and it's more difficult, it's more challenging. Yeah. And I think this is what stops a lot of our sisters yeah. um, and yeah. brothers, yeah. Um, you know, likewise. But so, so this is what we need to do, find a uh, teacher mm -hmm. who can teach us the tajweed. Mm -hmm. And only when you're confident in your tajweed rulings and you're yeah. able to pronounce mm -hmm. the basic tajweed rules, then, uh, you know, begin to teach others because it's good to teach others even, you know, if it's a little bit that you know. Start at home with mm -hmm. your children, you know, with your siblings maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, volunteer um, at um, 
mosques or mm -hmm. you know maktabs um, supplementary schools mm -hmm. um, and you can learn beside a teacher so it's like work experience mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you build up on the work experience so I think those are good ways for our sisters to connect um, to the Quran mm -hmm. but also you know our um, aunties in the community for example mm -hmm. I think the mosques provide this also but they can get together in one house right. you know if one sister take turns in mm -hmm. each other's mm -hmm. houses come together and um, you know do tafsir classes yeah. or even uh, you know just sit around the Quran take a ayah and learn about it yeah, course, yeah. and you can get the Quran in uh, um, Bangla as well Bangla, you know yeah. you can get it in Urdu as yeah. well so however um, they feel comfortable and the reason I say come together mm -hmm. because sisters feel encouraged by yeah, each other isn't yeah, it do. Uh, yeah. if you especially if your mothers you have mm -hmm. um, babies you can bring your babies together yeah. you're in somebody's home and you have that um, you know social aspect yeah, so exactly. it takes care of your needs um, in that sense but mm -hmm. also your learning yeah. uh, so to encourage so I think um, and it's good if husbands can support this Definitely. brothers and our fathers because that mm -hmm. is an obligation upon every woman to seek education in Islam you know yeah, yeah, um, and I think we've spoken about this before because the mothers mm -hmm. are like the first school for yeah. the children aren't they mm -hmm. um, you know the f early years from zero to five even seven yeah the mother's teaching the children yeah. you know and then Definitely. the father also mm. so uh, yeah I think one of my most fondest memories of when mm. I was a child is um, after every Maghrib Salah or just you know before we went to mm -hmm. bed my mom would sit down um, beside us and she would read the Quran while we slept oh, um, sure that, yeah. so I think that's such an amazing thing I think as you were talking I was just thinking about that mm -hmm. that um, even if if we're learning the Quran yeah. and we don't have it perfect but to sit beside our child and to recite it and make mistakes and correct ourselves mm -hmm. Um, I think that will also teach them that it's okay to yeah, make mistakes. Absolutely. You know, not everybody reads fluently. No. Not everybody can read. You know, in a nice, um, you know, like in a nice tone and things. Mm. But it's, we're tr still trying, and you know, even though we're adults, we're still learning a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that definitely teaches our children, you know, not to give up and just mm. to, you know, keep trying to develop a relationship with the Quran. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And you know something you mentioned. Um, what is it you were just saying? So you talked about the Quran mm -hmm. and children, you yeah. know, and just how your mother, mm -hmm. it was beautiful what you said yeah. about how your mother, you know, just recited and you were listening. Yeah. Um, similarly, I find, you know, my mother played a role like that in our lives. She would um, read us the uh, tafsir of the surahs, you know, she would mm -hmm. give us descriptions of uh, Jannah, Jahannam, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it, and it used to bring tears to your eyes. So it created that fear mm -hmm. and it created that love. Yeah. Um, and so you almost felt like you know the Quran, you understand the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, but not only that, I think um, it creates the love of Quran. Mm -hmm. The other thing I believe that we can do as parents um, is, you know, especially if you have newborn children, mm -hmm. um, you know, as mothers, when you're pregnant, if you recite a lot, you listen yeah. to a lot of Quran, Inshallah, mm -hmm. that will um, affect, you know, hopefully yeah. pass on to the child. But even when a child is born, mm -hmm. if you um, play Quran in the house, yeah. if you can't, uh, I mean, if you can recite yourself yes, better, course. if you're a happy with yourself, then yeah. of course you will expose your child to that. But if you're not, mm -hmm. then you can play the Quran. Yeah. And you're, what you will find is children are like sponge, you know, mm -hmm. they will um, absorb it. Yeah. So the child will learn through listening. Mm -hmm. So, Inshallah, by the age of <clears throat> I don't know, you know, two or three, yeah. that child would have already, just from listening, have absorbed quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So when you, um, and then if you make the t intention mm -hmm. to make your child a hafiz or a hafiza, mm -hmm. of course you will, um, you know, find a teacher for them, but you will find that you've already done the preparatory work yeah. because mm -hmm. you've provided that basic okay. um, learning. And not just learning, you know, you sit with them mm -hmm. and read and give them a chance to read as well. Okay. I think many children I've come across, you know, mashallah, um, you know, you get to see this on the social media, yeah. even many posts, two, three-year-olds, you know, mm -hmm. we even have hafid of a four, five-year-old hafid as yes. a hafid. So it's really inspiring, isn't it? Um, this Probably we didn't know about these methods, you know, mm -hmm. um, when we were younger, but now that we know, I think... You know, our brothers and sisters can take advantage of this if you want to create a love of the Quran yeah. for our children. Um, and don't force them to do it at yeah. a young age. Yeah. You know, let them develop the love naturally, yeah. and then they will ask you to. Of course, um, yeah. 
And I think, you know, the Quran competition we spoke about, mm -hmm. that's what was beautiful about it, that the children chose to be on the competition. Yeah. Yeah. You see, they want to compete with each other. They recite beautifully. Mm -hmm. They want to share that with the world, with their families, with their friends. But not only that, they're rewarded as well. Exactly. You know, they get a prize at the end of it as well. So there's like motivation, isn't it, for the child that um, I'm doing a good deed. Mm -hmm. I'll get rewarded for it, but I'll also get a prize. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah. Yeah, definitely. There's so many ways to inspire children. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think just if we maybe summarize right now, <coughs> there, yeah. um, the way we develop that relationship with the Quran and you know, for our children to you know, grow up with that mm. is just by exposing them to more and more, um, you know, whether we're reciting it or I'm recording to the if we can't like I'm just falling and is there for them then I'm just watching there like you know YouTube as well on short TV to YouTube that hair that a YouTube the hair so YouTube it must be maybe crunch if say that they're out of you know like what it must say you know recording so I'm thinking I may be during Ramadan time I'm gonna get mp3 plays for my kids and just put the Quran on there and they can listen to that so you know like but make sure when you play the Quran that they're not doing something else like not watching tv yeah um you know do, do you understand yeah, what I mean? yeah. nothing interactive it's fine if they're playing with a toy mm -hmm. and listening even yourself like you shouldn't be i don't know reading a book and yeah, listening to the quran course. you're listening to the quran mm -hmm. like for women it's very easy you can be washing the dishes oh, yeah. and listening to the quran yeah. isn't it you could be cooking mm -hmm. but listening to the quran even reading along so if you're um you know practicing your memorization for juzamma you want to uh, revise mm -hmm. you can play in the background you're alone cooking yeah. and just recite along with it exactly so yeah. you know it's like your revision is done you can recite them in your salah mm -hmm. you're practicing by the time ramadan comes mm -hmm. inshallah you'll be confident isn't yeah. it yeah and also i think um i also heard that mm -hmm. you're not supposed to read or, or recite um the quran when you're on your like monthly cycle mm -hmm. um is that is that the case or can i recite like what i know um you know how how does that work if just briefly so um there is a hukum um and the hanafi opinion um the traditional hanafi opinion mm -hmm. is that yes women don't recite mm -hmm. um when they're menstruating mm -hmm. um having said that um some believe that you can um, read the Quran. Right. So this is reading not tilawa, so not mm. as a form of ibadah. Right. But you know, like for example, when you're just reading to understand the words, mm. so it could be the translation right. or it could be the tafsir, mm. but they say you should break up the words. I see. Do you understand? So that's like, so that it's you're not doing tilawa. Yeah. There are some, a few opinions, mm. obviously, out, you know, even within the madhab and outside of the madhab, which allow um, for women to recite. Mm. They just say that you shouldn't touch the uh, Quran. Mm. Um, you know, so you shouldn't touch the Mus'haf. Mm. So th this is why you find women handle the Mus'haf with a cloth. Yes. So you can handle it with a cloth, outer mm. clothing. It mustn't be gloves. A lot of women mistake mm -hmm. thinking that you can wear gloves mm. and hold the Quran, not okay. for us. The Hanafi opinion is that you have a piece of cloth mm. with which, you know, it's like an outer, yeah. um, clothing or if the Quran is disattached mm -hmm. you know to a Quran covering and it has a Quran cover mm -hmm. um, um, and but it's not attached to the Quran mm. then you can place that on the Quran and hold it so okay. you don't touch the writing of the Quran so of, of course because it's a sacred text isn't it and yeah you're in impure state mm. um, and we need to remember I think for our sisters this is a um, this is a dispensation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. that when you're menstruating you know of course you're going through a uh, painful period mm -hmm. um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has excused you from ibadah you know mm -hmm. he has excused you from salah and often we see this as a we're regretful and we think oh you know I can't um, you know recite mm -hmm. or I can't pray but you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give this dispensation to anybody in the world except the women and this is something I think we need to realize that we mm -hmm. have a privilege over others Nobody has been excused salah and you know um, ibadah. Mm -hmm. Not even sick people. We mm -hmm. know that even sick people are expected of to um, you know uh, pray, even if it is like with um, uh, how do you say it? with signaling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think we need to understand that this is a blessing for yeah. us, and we shouldn't be unhappy about it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to ibadah, like I said, you can listen to the Quran, mm -hmm. and you can um, read du'as. Mm -hmm. So any surah, you know 
the Mu'addatain, so mm -hmm. you know, you can read the three quls, Mu'addatain, yeah. and the three quls, mm -hmm. you can read um, Ayatul Kursi, mm -hmm. so anything that is like a form of protection, protection. for us, yeah. um, you can read those surahs, because remember the intention is not Tilawa, mm -hmm. um, but it's protecting yourself. Okay, okay. So, <coughs> yeah. so Jazakallah Khair, Ustadah. Um, I mean, I'm going to ask you, and inshallah, if there's an issue for me, definitely I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, and I'm sure I'm going to do the same, you know, that I'm going to do the same. So, ask me if I'm going to ask you to ask me. And I'm going to ask you to ask me, inshallah, about the whole book. Inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you.